Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to talk about why you shouldn't really pre-order the M2 MacBook Air just yet. And you can't really as of right now, but all indications are that pre-orders are going live tomorrow on the 8th of July with deliveries slated somewhere around the 24th. And I don't think the M2 MacBook Air is a bad machine in any way, shape or form. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. The redesign is super attractive. But recent tests with the M2 MacBook Pro that launched a little bit earlier indicate there are two issues you need to be aware of before pre-ordering the M2 MacBook Air. And I think you should actually watch YouTubers and reviewers review the machine in detail before you just throw your wallet at the screen and tell, and tell Apple to take your money. So what are the two issues? Uh, first of all, they've been un uncovered by a lot of YouTubers and stuff, but I think the most prominent of them has been Vadim from Max Tech. He did a lot of work on this, a ton of videos, a ton of research into finding the issues with the M2. The first problem is the M2 MacBook Pro has an SSD that's twice as slow as the preceding one in the M1 MacBook Pro. So its predecessor was twice as fast. And guess what? The M2 MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air share components, share design. So pretty much there's a 95% certainty for me that the SSD that goes into the base MacBook Pro will also go in the MacBook Air, the base model. And the fact that the SSD is slower has an impact on everything you do because Mac OS uses the SSD to unload stuff from the RAM whenever it needs to. So a slower SSD will result in a slower system overall. The biggest problem I have with this is that there's absolutely zero disclosure from Apple about this. There's no information on their website. It wasn't mentioned in the presentation. Look, this happens oftentimes in the industry where manufacturers make a base model with cut down features and stuff to meet a price point and I can understand that. I'm not a particular fan of it. But reasonably, do you really think that a trillion dollar company such as Apple didn't know that they were shipping the M2 Pro with a significantly worse component than its direct predecessor when they labeled the M2 as being faster? And guess what? Some of these tests showed that the M2 paired with that cheap entry level SSD runs into a lot of performance issues even compared to the M1 before it because the SSD is slow. So if you keep the SSD occupied, which is going to happen on a base machine with limited storage, you're not going to get the fully advertised performance. So you need to be aware of this. The second big problem is the fact that the M2 appears to thermal throttle a lot more than its predecessor, the M1, and it generates a lot more heat. This was bound to happen because, well, remember the good old days when Apple made fun of Intel? Well. Intel had a generic playbook for a lot of years. Basically, they kept the same design process in place. They just made small improvements to the chip from one generation to the next, up the wattage, and presto, you get improved performance, but at the cost of a lot of heat issues. The M2 apparently follows the exact same playbook, though clearly not at the extent that Intel had gone. So the M2 uses more power than the M1 before it, and as a result, it generates more heat. And again, in Vadim's tests, the M2 MacBook Pro with the fan going on at full throttle peaked out at 108 degrees Celsius and was throttled down super aggressively. Granted, that test was pretty intensive. He was exporting 8K raw footage, which is massive and a pretty intensive task for any computer. So what do you think the performance of the M2 would look like in the air, which is going to be completely fanless design, where it actually ran into issues in the Pro that actually has a fan. So it's super important to wait and see how the machine actually behaves in real world usage. Yeah, you can say it's a lifestyle computer, more of a browsing machine, general office work machine. I can understand that, but there are some people out there who would probably need from time to time for the computer to handle more beefy tasks. And maybe the M2 will, or maybe it won't. We won't know for sure, until the embargo is lifted and we get the final reviews from reviewers and content creators and journalists alike. So my honest advice is wait a couple of days more, check out the content from these creators who go to the trouble of actually testing these machines because Apple's super opaque about this. They don't give out. This has always been their, their way of doing things. Their graphs are difficult to understand. They're not particularly explicit. They don't specify directly the exact technical specifications of their products and so on. So in order to reach out the best conclusion for yourself, you need to wait and see what the M2 Air is actually capable of. 
Having said all that though, if you just need an updated air with light tasks, office work, that kind of stuff, I'm pretty certain it will handle those tremendously well. But I'm a little bit concerned that on the top end, it may not really be as versatile as the M1 Air, which coincidentally was just a few percentage points slower overall in all these tests and benchmarks compared to the M1 with a fan in the MacBook Pro 13 inch. So let's wait out a couple of days, let's check out what actually happens, and I'm gonna be doing the same thing. I haven't pre-ordered any of these devices yet. I'm actually not really interested in upgrading quite, quite yet, to be frank with you, but we'll just have to wait and see. Hope you enjoyed today's video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.